Mercy, is this you? You promised that you would come. Why didn't you come as promised? I am sorry. I thought I could come, but something came up. That is why I did not come. Maybe some other time I will make it up to you. Is what came up bigger than our relationship? You keep giving excuses for why you couldn't make it all the time. Tell me, don't you have feelings for me? Of course I do, you have tried a lot for me, but something really came up. And to be honest with you, I forgot to let you know I wouldn't be coming. I am sorry. Try to understand, Henry. If you say so, no problem. I understand. Thank you for understanding. I want to be going now. We will see you next time. Wait, is there anything you need? Have you spent the money I gave you two days ago? Tell me, and I will give you another one. No, I have not spent them yet. When they are finished, I will tell you. Bye bye. Where is she rushing to? She doesn't even want to wait until I finish talking to her. I know what to do. Let me follow her secretly. I can't even believe I forgot we had an appointment, and he has been trying for me, but I don't just know why I develop weakness any time he asks me to visit him, and there is nothing he doesn't do for me. Oh no, he is a good man. I should show appreciation. I don't like the way I am showing coldness to him. Mercy why are you walking and talking to yourself? Is anything the matter? Not at all. Okay then, let me be going. Wait, brother Peter, how do you know if a man is meant for you? I am confused, and I have prayed and prayed, waiting for God to reveal to me in a dream if the man in my life is his will for me, but I have not had any dreams concerning it. What is she doing with Peter? Dreams are not the only way God speaks to his people. God can use different ways to speak to his people. Sometimes we ignore it, because it is not the way we were expecting it to come. But the truth is that God answers our prayers and speaks to us. God can use signs to speak to us. How do you feel when talking to the person? Do you feel free to talk anytime you see the person? The Bible says there is no fear in love. Do you have inner peace around the person? Do you feel protected and proud of the person? Do you feel happy anytime the person is around you? Do you feel consciously present anytime you are with the person? Is your heart free with the person? Or you feel indebted to the person, which is why you are enduring his present. If the person is the will of God, for you will not think of any other thing apart from paying attention to the person, you will not feel in a hurry to discharge the person, you will love to open up your secret to the person without thinking of hiding some. God can equally reveal his will for you by opening your eyes to keep seeing the fault of the person, then you have the answer. Don't say let me see. If I can manage it, if you make a mistake and enter marriage because of what the person is doing for you, you will keep regretting it all your life. Go for what you want. Thank you very much, Brother Peter, I understand now. I will be going then. No wonder I keep asking myself why I feel restless whenever he is close to me and I keep enduring it because of the way he is taking care of me. What are you doing with Peter? How do you know I am here? Are you monitoring me? Answer me, what are you doing with Peter? There is nothing I don't do for you, and all the time I ask you to come, you will keep giving excuse upon excuse. I keep wondering why, but now I see it is because of Peter. Listen, I have nothing to do with Peter. I know you are a good man and you have been helping me a lot even when I did not ask for it. I like you for that, but I can't marry you. My spirit and yours are not connecting. I don't want to enter into something and later regret it. Please find somebody that is meant for you. Thank you. You lie. Did you hear that? In fact, you are going to marry me, whether you like it or not. Did you hear that? Otherwise, I will deal with you. I am sure you don't know me. What? So Henry is not even what I thought he was. So Peter is the reason. He will hear from me. Peter, Peter, come out here. What is it, Henry? Why are you screaming? I can see you don't have sense to ask me that kind of question. Peter, what were you doing with my woman? What are you talking about? Oh no. What? You think I am here for a joke or something? Listen. Let today be the first and last time I see you near her again. Did you hear that? Did you just slap me? What can you do? In fact, I am ready for you. Fight me if you can, and if not, shut up. Otherwise, 
I will slap you again and again and again. Fight me if you are a man. Oh no, this guy has insulted me. Let me show him. Don't fight him back. Remember, you have promised God not to fight again. Let him carry his trouble and go. He will meet his match. No, how can I watch someone slap me and get away with it? Do you know what that means? It is shameful. Everyone is going to be looking down on me. In fact, if I don't rush him now and slap him back, people will start seeing me as a weakling. I better go now and beat him up. Who is Henry to slap me? I will not take it. I will fight him. But I am a child of God. Children of God are made to face persecution. Let him go. Remember what the Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 29. Don't say, I'll do to him like he did to me. I'll be sure to pay him back for what he did. Romans 12 verses to 19. Don't pay people back with evil for the evil they do to you. Focus your thoughts on those things that are considered noble. As much as it is possible, live in peace with everyone. Don't take revenge, dear friends. Instead, let God's anger take care of it. After all, scripture says, I alone have the right to take revenge. I will pay back, says the Lord. But this is too much. I will not take it. If I take it next time, he will do it again. I will fight him and beat him mercilessly so that next time he learns to fear me. Don't fight him. He might die in your hand. Yes, I will not fight him. He is looking for someone to die in his hand. I am still waiting for you to fight me like a man if you have the gut. Or are you such a weakling that you can't fight? I will not fight you. Please go. You are lucky you did not try it. I would have sent you to your ancestors. What is wrong with this, Peter? How can he stand this kind of humiliation? I wish it were me. I would have dealt with him. I hope I am not the one you are referring to. Larry. Let me keep him silent. I will not answer him. His kind die easily. I don't want to fight him. I will beat him up. Let him die if he wants to die. He thinks he is stronger than everyone in this compound. I will show him he is nothing. Yes, I will show him he is nothing. Let me leave him. No, I will not leave him. I will not leave him is too much for him. What if you are? What will you do? How dare you? Oh no, oh no, you think I am Peter. By the time I am done with you, you will no longer slap anyone. My head, my head. Oh no. No, no, he is dead. You have killed him. Larry has killed Henry. This can't be true. What have I done? I should have let him go. You are under arrest for the murder of Mr. Henry? Now move it. Officer I did not mean to kill him. He slapped me, and I slapped him back, that's all. You better keep silent, for whatever you say will be used against you in court. Now move. Oh no, what have I done? I shouldn't have fought him. I should have walked away. I should have listened to the voice that says don't fight, but ignore it. Now look at me. I am going to spend the rest of my life in prison. I never knew Henry was a walking core looking for someone to put in trouble. It could have been me. Oh God, I thank you for making me listen to you. Peter, how did you know he was going to die if you fought him back? I choose to listen to God's voice, not to fight him back. You listen to God's voice. How do you know when God is speaking to you, especially when you are provoked? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. John 8 verse 47. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. John 10 verses 27 to 28. For God speaks in one way, and in two, though man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, while they slumber on their beds, Job 33 verses 14 to 15. You are still speaking in riddles? Make me understand. How do you know when God is speaking to you during the day? When you face challenges. Anytime you face a problem, listen to yourself deeply. There are two voices in every human heart speaking at the same time. One is very gentle, the other is very loud, and offer quick gain because of the offer. Many times we follow it and regret it later, but if you are a true child of God, you will understand that when God is speaking to you, it will call your attention back and remind you of the attributes of God. 
it will remind you of the consequences of what you are about to do, then ask you to calm down and let go. It is not difficult to know because it allies with the word of God, though Satan sometimes can equally use the word of God to speak to us, so to be sure of the one that is God's voice, ask yourself, if God is physically with me now, what would he have me do? Which of these two voices will give me peace at the end? Don't focus on what you will gain in the beginning. Focus on how the end will be, on what God really likes, and on the consequences of such an act, then it will become very clear to you which one is the voice of God. The voice of Satan can never remind you of the consequences that come after. All it will show you is the pleasure in it, the name you will make, and the praise you will get from that. The voice of Satan focuses on pride, pleasure, and gain. For example, if it is to steal, the voice of Satan will tell you, do you know how much you will be making if you succeed? The voice of God will say, if you are caught, remember you will be killed and disgraced. The voice of Satan will keep pushing you, saying, I am smart. Let me plan it very well so that no one will catch me because I need that money. With that money, half of my problem will be solved. You see, the reason we follow the voice of Satan is because it gives us pleasure, quick gain, and pride, and that is what our flesh desires, but the voice of God suffers long, humiliation, pain, and endurance and gives peace at the end, but our flesh hates those long processes and loves them quick. It is not that we do not hear the voice of God, but we choose to ignore it because of the quick gain and pleasure. Larry chose to fight, not because there is no voice that tells him to let him go, but because he wanted everyone to see him as a real man, he wanted to show he has power, he wanted to earn people's praise and respect, so he allowed pride that Satan offered and fleshly love to cover the voice of God that told him not to fight, to follow God's voice and will. You must hate pride, quick gain, and its pleasure, then you can hear very clearly. Many people fall victim to one thing or another not because they did not hear the voice of God's warning, but because they ignore it for what they will gain. Now I understand. God speaks to us in many ways. Here are some of the ways. 1. Through His words. Reading the Bible and living in accordance with its teachings is a great way to hear God's voice. If you are living in direct opposition to His word, you might be missing an obvious sign that God is speaking to you. 2. Through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can prompt us in a gentle and subtle way, guiding us towards the path that God has set before us. You may feel a sense of peace or conviction in your heart, a sense of clarity or direction that you did not have before. These are all signs that God is speaking to you and leading you in His ways. 3. Through repetitive advice or situations, if you keep being given the same advice, or going through the same situations, it might mean that God wants you to understand the truth, or learn a lesson. 4. Through dreams Dreams can be a way for God to communicate with us. If you have a dream that feels significant or meaningful, it might be worth exploring what it could mean. God can equally speak to us through our feelings. When you start having feelings about something, pay attention to it, whether it is good or bad. A lot of people fall victim to ignoring feelings. For instance, if you are too fond of a particular person, maybe the person is your friend. At some point, you start feeling cold and insecure, not free as usual, whenever the person is around you. Without any reason, you feel something, but you can place your hand in it. God could be talking to you. Then you should pay attention and try to find out if it is bad feelings or good feelings. If it is bad, give the gap immediately. Don't think of gain or what you will lose if you do so. That is what kills a lot of people. They notice something and ignore it. If somebody is staying with them, they will be afraid to ask the person to go because of who will be doing the work. If I ask him or her to go, you see, because of the gain, and in the process they die an untimely death. God speak to us. We can hear it very clearly if we put gain behind. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you.